Hi, my name is Tamara Walter and I am a Spanish colonial archaeologist at Texas Tech University. And today I'm going to be talking about frontier women in Spanish Texas. In particular, I want to talk about the material evidence or artifacts that have been collected from colonial sites in, here in Texas that we can directly link to women and women's activities. And this is a topic that really doesn't get talked a lot about, so I thought today would be a perfect opportunity to address it. So during the colonial era, men dominated the public sphere of life while women dominated the private or domestic side of life. Uh, as a result, women were charged with raising children and cooking and cleaning and maintaining the household. So they had an enormous influence over foodways and the organization of residential space. It's not surprising then that uh, some of the artifacts that we can directly link to women are artifacts that are related to domestic chores. For example, cooking. One of the activities that women were engaged in that was almost exclusively uh, a activity for women was the, the preparation and uh, making of tortillas. And that required grinding corn and that uh, to grind corn, you needed manos and matates or grinding stones in order to process the corn for tortillas. So it isn't really that surprising that we find artifacts like this mano at the top, it's broken uh, at many colonial sites across Texas. Manos and matates would have been important tools of the colonial household or kitchen. In addition, kitchens would have been outfitted with mortars and pestles for grinding plants and herbs for household consumption. In addition to cooking, women were also expected to know how to sew. And this was a particularly important skill to have along the frontier where you weren't always getting ready access to goods. So being able to repair clothing and darn socks and maybe even make clothing was a skill that women needed. Artifacts related to sewing include this little bone, or excuse me, wood, a needle case, which held pins and needles that would have been part of a woman's sewing kit. Um, this crochet hook was found at Goliad, and it likely dates to the latter part of the colonial era and tells us something about uh, some of the uh, pastimes that women were engaged in. Now, in addition to sewing, women were expected to be proficient in needlework, and this was the skill that was taught to women uh, at a very young age. So sewing and needlework would have required thimbles, and we see these at many sites. In fact, they're actually quite common. But what's interesting about thimbles is that men were, were also engaged in, in sewing. You had tailors um, at colonial sites, but... Um, you also find at many sites, smaller or child-sized thimbles like this one shown below. This thimble was likely a thimble that belonged to a young girl. Young girls were expected to learn how to sew from a very young age. And so these child-sized thimbles are something that we can associate with females. Now, beyond domestic chores, women and um, artifacts that we can associate with them include artifacts of personal adornment. During the colonial era, women were very religious and uh, alongside religion, they still held some superstitious views. Women were particularly fond of amulets and charms that they could wear on their person and also they could bestow upon their children to provide protection. So some of the, the different kinds of personal adornment include necklaces and bracelets and earrings um, that were not just decorative, but also could have held some protective properties like coral beads. These coral beads that you see here on the right were recovered from uh, archeological sites here in Texas and were likely worn by women or maybe even children. Coral is an important, um, material because it was believed to protect against evil, especially in children. There was also the belief that coral could help staunch blood, that it could um, uh, help prevent tooth decay and fight off other ailments. So it isn't surprising that we find them and that we see women wearing them in some paintings from the 18th century like this image here in the middle. 
other artifacts like these milk beads that uh, the string of, of milk beads and, and other um, uh, stone beads were found at the site of Mission Valero um, were probably worn by a woman who was hoping to improve lactation. Milk beads could be anything from white agate to shell to bone or white glass. Um, it was all about the color in this instance. And the idea was that if you could wear these beads on your person, that this would help improve the um, flow of milk to breastfeeding mothers. But there was also a sense that maybe it would in increase fertility. One of the most popular materials for amulets and charms on the frontier is jet. And um, you, like you can see here in this painting, the woman is wearing some jet beads and there is a jet amulet attached to her child's gown. In the image here of the jet beads, those here on the, on the right side, those are artifacts that are actually part of a rosary bead. So you bringing, you're bringing together here some of the superstition and, and religious beliefs of women on the frontier. Jet was thought to also ward off evil and it was especially important for children. The use of jet in the production of, of uh, higas or fist-like amulets like the one the child is wearing here was also thought to provide an extra layer of protection against the evil eye. Here are some other images of, of artifacts um, or amulets like these um, jet higas here found at colonial sites in Texas. You can see an even better image with this painting of a young child with a figa or higa that's attached to the, the gown of the child that's made also out of jet. Women also wore amulets like this uh, metal charm at the top right it's in the shape of a shell, and this was a symbol for fertility. Down below to the right, we have two heart charms. And the heart symbolized the love of Christ, but it also could be worn as a pendant on a necklace around someone's heart as a love charm. Now, in addition to amulets, women were also adorning themselves in jewelry. And uh, women of all classes, wore jewelry. Women of the upper class were also using um, a variety of different uh, jewelry uh, types. They wore chokers and bracelets and rings and, and brooches, but the difference was that they were adorning themselves in pearls and precious metals and gems. Women on the frontier, for the most part, could not afford that. And so they were wearing paste glass jewelry, like these examples here. A lot of what you're seeing in these images are parts of earrings. Earrings were very fanciful and elaborate during the 18th century in Texas. And some of this were some of these items were also probably part of brooches and necklaces. Um, pendant earrings and the Zarcillo style of earrings that we see this woman wearing. She's an upper-class lady. You can see how elaborate her earrings are. Um, we're also in fashion. The golden earrings down at the bottom were rare, um, but uh, nevertheless, occasionally they've been found at, at colonial sites. Drop pendants made out of glass and even a, a jet pendant that we see here on the top right. Um, make up some of the, the uh, jewelry that has been found at colonial sites that um, we can link to women. In addition to jewelry, other accessories included fans. Now, likely fans were things or accessories, fashion accessories that uh, we associate with more upper-class women. The thing about stick fans, which were so popular during the 18th century, and oftentimes we see women portrayed in paintings like this one here on the right, holding a fan, um, is that they're very hard to find archeologically. The artifacts here at the top, you'll notice how thin they are. These are wooden stick blades that form part of the bottom of the fan. As you can see down here in the bottom image, that's, it comes from the very bottom part. They're often misidentified by archeologists. Part of that is because they come in pieces. And uh, honestly, they don't, 
they, you don't find them very often because they are so delicate. But nevertheless, um, they were something that we can associate with females. So I know this is a very brief overview and, and I only had a, a limited amount of time to talk about it, but I think all of this underscores the fact that women were on the frontier. They were part of colonial society and a vibrant part at that. Thank you.